Argentina. I'm a two-dimensional visual artist and I live and work in what I like to call the upper upper west west side of New York City. Most people call it northern New Jersey, architect. Uh, I'm a recently retired art teacher. I taught kindergarten through fifth grade for 22 years and 13 years at the high school level. And uh, it was an amazing 35 year journey for me. Uh, I love the role of educator, I love the role of mentoring, of being father, being mother, guidance counselor, I love the whole role. It was just really truly a great uh, time in my life. If I had to look back at my childhood and, and try to figure out from my roots like what really got me inspired into doing art, two things come to mind immediately. One, my grandmother, who I was probably under 10, you know, and I remember her like taking paint in, in big buckets you know, and, and red paint and sponges and just slapping texture on the wall in, in our kitchen and, our, you know, and everyone would look at her and go, Grandma, what are you doing? You know, and she would just like do with the sponge paint, but before it was really fashionable to do that and before it was trendy, my grandmother was like splashing paint on the wall and she always invited me to kind of to work with her. I remember my mother buying me, you know, paint by number kits and doing string art and uh, working with rocks and creating little art. Uh, she was a pyromaniac. She would like melt wax on top of candles and on top of bottles and little kinds of crazy crafty things back in the 50s and the 60s. And I think those kind of things, if I look at my work now, probably had some kind of, some kind of uh, an effect because I do like a lot of texture in my work. I do a lot of rocks and natural organic things in my work. And probably, without even consciously thinking about that now that I'm talking about it, it's probably why my work is so inspired by, or motivated and driven um, by texture and crazy colors. Uh, back in the day when I started putting myself out there as an artist, I was a printmaker. And uh, after I had re received my master's degree, I started showing um, my etchings. And I remember clearly I was 30 years old and I said to myself, I'm going to put myself out there as an artist and see what happens. And the whole year when I was 30, I entered shows, I juried shows around the world. Uh, and surprisingly, I got into many of them and rejected from many also, but it was a, it was a great learning experience. It was, uh, it was just pre-internet, so there was, uh, you know, it was kind of costly at the time and it was... Uh, you know, it was a lot of work, it was hard work, and I had a full-time job, so after my year was up, I just felt I wasn't ready to continue that process. I guess it was three years ago, my students turned me on to Facebook, and they insisted that I sign up for Facebook. So I resisted for a while, and finally I, I went on, and I signed up, and I told myself I would give it two weeks. Well, three years later, um, it's actually been pretty much part of my life. Uh, I like to turn the, my time on Facebook as thoughtless relaxation, but it's actually a lot of fun. I go on and off all the time, and um, it's actually been a pretty amazing tool for me uh, as an artist. Um, from my exposure on Facebook, I have um, been invited to um, several group shows. I have a one-man show uh, opening this evening here in Hackensack at Bergman Community College. and. Uh, it's just been a great tool for me. At the beginning also, I, I used it to showcase mainly my students' work. And I was really amazed at the feedback that I got from parents, from friends, from people all, all, all around the world, really, um, uh, uh, from the work that I was putting up. So I decided it was time to put some of my work up. And little by little, I started introducing my work to Facebook. And uh, it's, just been a great, it's just been a great experience. Usually, I guess if I had to describe my work, you know, sometimes I like to let it just sit there, you know, with the, with the texture. If you, when you look at my work, you'll see I use a lot of texture. Sometimes I let it just sit there and relax and, and I like the cold finish with just no subject matter. But should subject matter start to happen and develop, it's 99.9% figurative. Uh, I love to manipulate and interpret the human body. It's really what uh, fuels me, fuels my spirit, and uh, it just makes me want to do more. I just love that. I, there's a term I kind of coined, uh, recycled consciousness, because I, I, I take images from different places in my life, the unrelated images. It could be from a photograph I've taken, it could be from a photograph I've seen in the magazine, it could be from any, any number of sources. I like, I, I like to put them together on the canvas you know, and, and 
invite them to really work together um, through placement, through color, through theme. And I really don't have a story on my own when I start to do it. I just, I, I let the, the piece really kind of guide me as to where it wants to go. I've always tried to be really happy in my life, no matter what, what age I was at or at what point in my life. And uh, I've always said that getting older was not for the weak or the timid. And uh, I think right now I'm at a, such a wonderful point in my life. I couldn't really be happier. Things have just fallen into place. And I've made them work. And I think uh, part of my spiritual journey has kind of helped me realize that I've, I've created and I've painted a damn good life for myself so far. I'm at a, you know, I'm really at a happy point. And through retirement, although I had very, very mixed feelings about it at the beginning, and I do really miss the kids and stuff, I'm looking at it as a real, a brand new chapter for myself. And, uh, and I've opened the door to, to the gallery work, and I, I'm excited to see what's going to happen, really. Really.